Hi. Uh, you may have noticed I've been away for a while. Uh, Deep Purple and myself, we've been doing some other stuff for the last few months. Anyway, I'm back. Now, whenever I've done what I very lightly call my drum clinic evenings, because they're not really there, an evening with, and I try and entertain the people with stuff other than drumming, stories, information. Um, one of the questions I get asked very often is my first meeting with Richie. Well, the few of you who've been to those evenings will know the story, but I realize that many of you haven't been to those meetings and probably never will get the chances. There's only a few countries I, think I can do them in. Um, so let's tell the story. Uh, I first met Richie early in 1967 on a ferry between uh, Dover in the UK and Ostend in Europe. And uh, we all knew who he was. He was already a name uh, amongst British musicians. We knew of the, the great guitarist. Um, but I just saw him, I didn't actually meet him. He was on his way back home to Hamburg, where he was living at the time. And myself and Rod Evans and our band, the Maze, we were off to Milan for three months' work, which I've talked about before. Anyway, after that, we moved up to Hamburg to play at the Star Club, which was a different world to now. Just to put you in the picture, Monday to Friday, there were three bands. Uh, and each band played an hour, had two hours off, played an hour, two hours off, played an hour. So it was like a nine hour evening. Uh, hard work. But the weekends were even worse. There were four bands, so you had an hour on, three hours off, hour on, you'd get the picture. Uh, it was hard. But when you're kids, you can do anything, and we were kids. Uh, the great thing about it was you played so much every night that you had to improve. You had to get better, and you got better really, really quickly because you were always doing it. Anyway, during this uh, three weeks at the Star Club, Richie was in the audience one night, and he came up and said hello and said how much he enjoyed my playing. Now that was a really nice thing. I felt really good about it. But we finished the shows and uh, we went back to the UK and I thought nothing more about it. Then in uh, early 1968, Rod Evans, wonderful guy, um, felt that our band was actually going nowhere. And he was probably right. And he, he saw an advert in the Melody Maker magazine for a new band that would require a singer. So he applied for the job. And when he got there, he found it was Richie Blackmore and John Lord, Nicky Simpler. Uh, and Richie recognized Rod from the year before. And he said, have you still got the drummer? And Rod said, yeah. Rich said, you've got to bring him along. So that's what happened. So the first time I met Richie was outside a train station, a little town north of London called Potter's Bar, which is about three miles, five kilometers, where we were going to start rehearsing the band that would become Deep Purple. Anyway, I can remember exactly what he looked like when he picked me up. He looked great. He had this sort of box sort of Regency or 19th century type black coat on with these trousers that were more, more fitting to a, a lawyer, sort of sharp pinstripe. I remember it like it was yesterday. Anyway, he arrived in Nick Simper's Jaguar and they drove me back to the hall, Deves Hall, where we were 
where the band were set up to practice. And uh, they already had a drummer in place, a really good, experienced drummer. His name was Bobby Woodman. But I got the impression it wasn't really working between Bobby and Richie and John and Nick. Uh, so his kit was set up there. Uh, now that's a problem. So as far as I remember it, uh, Bobby was asked or coerced to nip down to the village and get some cigarettes or something like that. You know, there was a, a ploy to get him out of the house, uh, which he duly did. And while he was away, I sat down on his drum kit and I stole his gig. You know, there's not much you can say about it other than that. Um, looking back, when you get a chance to move up in the music industry, you have to take it or you'll spend the rest of your life wondering what would, what would have happened if I'd taken that chance. And I'm sure had the roles been reversed, Bobby would have done exactly the same thing. Therefore, if I had ever met, ever met him, which I never did, I doubt I'd have, I would have said sorry. You have to take that chance. Anyway, whatever I did at that little audition, it must have been okay because uh, almost immediately uh, John and Richie said, you're in. Uh, so then I had to beat a hasty retreat before Bobby got back from his little chore. Um, I'm sure that was very awkward for the guys and for the managers at the time. Um, but there is no nice way to do that sort of thing. I know. I was on the receiving end of it when David Coverdale decided to replace me with Cozy Powell. You know, it's not a great feeling. Uh, but to this day, I believe that David wanted a more visible face for the public to lock onto other than his. And Cozy was certainly that. He was around town and seen all the time. Not the way I wanted to live my life. Anyway, that's the little story plus some bits about the first time I met Richie. So now a lot of you will know this, the truth as opposed to a few of you. Anyway, I hope to do some more soon. And uh, all of you stay well, stay safe, and uh, be as good as you can. <laughs>